Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Here with Cormac Byrne and Paul, who's always here. Um, Cormac from the Daily Mirror. We're here to the talk face. about yeah, the face of Irish Football Fan TV. He thinks he looks like Ryan Gosling, he doesn't really though. I was just copying Richie there with the face thing. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're here today to talk about the situation currently at Bray Wanderers, which um, all blew up Cormac with a statement on Friday night at half time and a three 0 defeat to Dundalk up in Oreo Park, didn't it? Yeah, um, I mean it's second against third in the league. You're looking for uh, you're looking for a good competitive game. You're looking to overtake your rivals, and you can see the goal within the first five minutes, and you think things can't get any worse. But apparently, as Bray have shown, they can. A half-time statement was released, which basically said the club has no money. Um, the fans aren't coming in the gate. And to be fair to the club, I mean, the results on the pitch couldn't really be much better than what's what's been given. And yeah. hasn't really attracted fans in the gate all the same. And now Bray looks to be in trouble. Yeah. I wonder what, what will motivate them to come out half-time. To say it in the middle of a game, which you know, what I mean, it's a bit of a bizarre time to do it rather than waiting to maybe the final whistle. Yeah, like it, I don't. May it was either possibly to you know try and brush under the rug as much as possible by putting it out in the middle of a game where maybe people don't see it as much, but that's a error because Bray aren't going to bring a hell of a lot of fans up to Oreo Park, and a lot of them are going to be sitting who are actually going to the games in the Carlisle grounds. Be sitting there on Twitter, just scrolling yeah. through, and all of a sudden the statement comes up at half time. And the whole second half is just then the fans who are in the ground, Bray wise, even the Dark lads. I'm sure some of the Bray staff and everything like that probably knew by the second half. So you're kind of guaranteeing yourself a loss on Friday night, really. Even I know you're behind and stuff in the first half, you're guaranteeing yourself yeah. a loss from that point onwards. I think the reason behind it was because, as I said, it's second against third. Um, there wasn't too many games on the league this week with the uh, European fixtures, so they knew yeah. that most of the national media who would be covering a League of Ireland game would be at that one. Yeah, and I think to be fair to them, that worked. To, that worked in their favour. I really did spread quite quickly. Yeah, and it was the talk, much of the talk of Irish football for the week. Yeah, um, big time. And Paul, you obviously aren't as in depth into the situation as Cormac would be. Um, we're kind of mixing a bit of Cormac. I actually chatted to the brain manager Harry Kenny earlier on for his other job. <laughs> um, but Paul is the writing on the wall for any football club when they basically let their best player go for a quarter of what he's worth the day before to the team they're playing the next day oh, yeah, definitely like, and it, it just leads, it shows the gap from the top to anywhere else yeah. a, bit like, a bit like the Premier League from the gap from uh, the English Premier League from like top six down yeah. the big gap in, in expanding boys and the, everyone taking their players from, le or from lesser teams to better players are always going to the top two teams, kind of like the SPL as well. No one can really compete. The top teams are buying the the weaker players, and it's a bit similar in a sense when Portsmouth, as you know yourself, when, when yeah. a lot of their players went yeah from Hamilton because the club were going to dire straits. Yeah, when Spurs bought half our squad. Um, but we'll move on then to the next little bit that kind of came out, and that was over the weekend with a lot of social media posts, whether it be Snapchat, Twitter, everything like that. First big one was Gary McKay, Baron Green and Derek Foran um, in the car after the club had essentially said that the players could leave and a Snapchat of all them saying we're for sale. Does that kind of signal the start of the mass exodus that is surely to come from Bray well, with the way things are? I think Dylan Conley's uh, exit already already started that last week. Um, Harry Kenny said today that, that uh, Conley's sale was nothing to do with uh, the money problems, but I mean... So the, man, the, dog the, street, the, dog, the dog on the street now is what he really means. Like um, He said that Conley wanted European football, but I mean, if he, if he really wanted European football, he would stay at Bray and secure it. Like, Bray, yeah. Bray bet Dundalk 3-1 away already this season. Why would you... I mean, I know Dundalk obviously are a higher calibre, but in the League of Ireland, anybody can win the league in any given season. Not yeah. saying Bray were going to win the league, but they definitely could have stolen the merits in second or third. I think it's a shame to see them go. I, I, I used to love going out, uh, going down to Bray for a day out. It's a good laugh, and all. it's a good club. I, I, I actually really like the car. We were, only, uh, we were only down there a few weeks ago, obviously, for a video before the Austria game with the Ireland fans playing the Austria fans. And, and then the Celtic the, game as well. Yeah, and the, sta yeah, and the stadium was, you know, it's it's a decent stadium as far as League of standards go. Obviously, it's a little bit dilapidated in parts, but probably better than a lot of the grounds you go to in the League of Ireland. And, 
has a charm. Yeah, it does. It has a certain charm to it. I think any journalist who's ever been down there and sat in the press box will say there's less of a charm because yeah. um, you it's need to bring, cold. Need to bring about cold. six coats in the middle of July yeah. when it's sweltering <laughs> heat. You come with a pair of shorts and a you t-shirt could, you walk, and you're wearing you can, your winter gear inside. You can walk on the road outside the Carlow grounds and it can be roasting hot. Yeah. And you, you, you hop inside and it's five degrees colder no, yeah. matter, no matter what time of year. So. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, there definitely is a charm to the club and the charm to everything about it. Um apart from obviously the money issues. Yeah. But Ryan Brennan came out then as well, and the flip side of the other lads of Four and Green and McCabe kind of saying they're on their way out, um, and Ryan Brennan came out and said he was staying. Again, that could, be, that could be a Brennan brother with, with, <laughs> with their typically uh, tension-seeking kind of uh, yeah. cries, you know. Um, Maybe he's related to Fabian Delph. <laughs> no, I, definitely related I to Killian, and Killian's the one for doing a lot of this stuff. I can't see many of the first-team players staying, and... I certainly can't see him staying. Um, there might be one or two guys who maybe are coming back from injury who want to maybe prove themselves in the Premier Division and get a new contract with somewhere else next season. Yeah. But I can't see I can't see any of the first team squad then. Really, even the local lads and there's not many of them. Most of the lads would be from around the country. But uh, yeah. there's Hugh Douglas and <clears throat> Jared Pender, and both of them are linked. It moves away. So yeah. if the local lads are leaving, you it's know things, you of... know things are bad. And as we're on that, we were going to talk about it in a couple of minutes, but we we'll, may as well talk about it now while we're on it, um, where some of the players might actually end up going. Mm. So you've got you know, your Gary McCabe's and Aaron Green's and stuff, some of the key, more key players for them. You see them kind of finding a home pretty easy at the, in the top echelons yeah, of the division. McCabe is second, te- second score at the moment. Second top think, goal um, scorer, yeah. took him over again. McCabe will, will have no shorts as a club, I'm sure. Would you um, think Shamrock Rovers for him? Or there was trouble the there, wasn't there? But I, ended... I could see him going back to Rovers. Cork might be a bit, a bit too far from home. Well, I know he works in Dublin. He actually yeah. he does a job on the side. Yeah. In the daytimes as a rep, I think. So, yeah, he does it for Lucas Aid. Yeah, he's a Lucas Aid rep. I could so. see him probably going to Rovers. I don't think any of the other Dublin clubs could really offer him the money. Yeah, I can't yeah, see no, Bowers or Pats really having enough. Really. Um, Unless Cork and Dundalk are the only other two. But would, he even, would he start at Dundalk? Or would he start at either of those? I don't know. Would uh, he? he might start at Cork mm. or battle for a place at Cork. I don't think he's going to get in at the dock as long as McElhenney, yeah. Duffy and McGrath yeah. are there. And now there's Connolly there as well. So, I mean, yeah. there's, there's a lot, an awful lot of attacking options. So, I'd say Rovers could probably be the most likely uh, move for him. I think it makes sense for him to go to Rovers. Yeah. Um, another player I'm interested in actually asking you about, and he's not maybe as big a name, Kevin Lynch has had a really impressive season. Mm. And Kevin O'Connor is on his way out of Cork. Yeah. Do you think there's a chance Kevin Lynch moves? down south to Cork to maybe help fill the void see I think an, I think an awful lot of these lads uh, from kind of greater Dublin clubs stay like they like like. I think it's easier for clubs to draw players if you're if you've good proximity to Dublin because that's where jobs are and as we know most league variant players have jobs yeah. outside of their outside of football so I think many of them are probably at prey because it was so handy for them to go into Dublin and work in Dublin and live in Dublin Cork might be a bit too far for some of the lads who aren't guaranteed to make the money, who aren't yeah. guaranteed a place every week, so maybe not with Cedo. I'd um, say it probably goes to um, Paul, we'll talk about then. The FAI have released a statement this evening. We're talking on Monday evening. And the FAI have just released a statement. And as me and Cormac were reading it outside, we both pretty much said that we've read this somewhere before and we read this when Monaghan were in this situation. We read this when yeah. Atlanta were in this situation a while ago. When shells are in the situation, it's the exact same statement, just a different club, you, or it's just a different club they, on the heading. So, Paul, do you kind of see with the FAI that this is just obviously you follow the league, but not maybe to the extent you would have in the past? Yeah, but just do you think this is just the FAI? Get back into it and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, do you think this is the FAI now just completely showing their lack of care or anything for the league? Definitely, like <laughs> you, you talk to anyone kind of associated with the league and. They're always trying to say, like any of the real fans that you, we, when we've come across, because we've been to different clubs and stuff like that, and they all say, and that's why a lot of them are tempted not to come on this show, yeah. because they don't want to um, put their name of the FAI down, but like, it's every fan's opinion, and that's what we're, we're trying to promote here. Is, is, that's the reason why this club is in this situation, because they have a lack of fans, and they're yeah. not going, and because it's there's not enough recognition being made for the league. Yeah, you said yourself you've got people coming up to you in supermarkets and say, saying what a magnificent job we're doing for the League of Ireland and stuff like that. And yeah. by promoting shows like this, you will get people coming on 
uh, getting their kids watching and going to League of Ireland from stuff like this. Yeah. The FAI, on the other hand, possibly should have things like this, but they don't. No. They have um, FAI TV and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but that seems to rear its head for the national team. National yeah. team. And maybe the odd uh, kind of tributary oh. women's, this, this women's, is, women's, uh, women's international, international video. Yeah. Um, this, this is why this channel was made for stuff like this, for, for people to be passionate, yeah. for people to come out and say what they feel. You know what I mean? I, I purposely want people to come on uh, and rant and rave and go mad. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. It's all about honesty and, and it's for the fans, Irish football fan TV. I think the uh, the FAI press release was a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. It was four paragraphs long, about 120 words, and they basically said, we want Bray Wonders to clarify their position. They've said there's money to pay the wages for one more week. And how, much, how much more can you clarify? Yeah. Um, it's ridiculous, really. It's just kind of delaying the inevitable that it'll come it'll come to a bigger head eventually and well, there's, yeah, a, pa- there's yeah. a pattern there developing you know what I mean you think they would have done something in the first time in Shells and that- I mean maybe Bray shouldn't have even got a licence um, they at the start of the season they would have had to bring a budget to the FAI the FAI would have had to sign off on that they would have had to prove that the figures in the budget were within their means Yeah. and they have money they've so, they've so much money so much more money than they've ever had before and to go out and spend that money, you have to have a certain amount of fans coming in the gate. And I think the FAI's quote is a 65% turn, um, turnaround rate where you have to, you know, it has to be kind of in proportion to what, what's coming through the gate. Yeah. And Bray's never had a history of a large following. So I don't really see how the FAI could have said, oh, Bray want to sign or spend X, Y and Z on players and and possibly like match likes of Dundalk and Rovers for, for wages. And say, oh, that's grand. Go ahead. There's nothing suspicious there at all. I mean, yeah. it's just a lack of foresight in their behalf. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I take it back to in June of 2012 when Monaghan actually went bust. I remember I actually had a family friend who was he was goalkeeper coach up in Monaghan at the time, and I used to actually go up to games with him and yeah, stuff cool. like that. Yeah, Deck Mulligan. Um, oh, he's man. coaching kids at Wayside now. But a great local coach from around the area where we live. Ireland's answer to <laughs> Neville Southall. Yeah, cracking goalkeeper in this day. Um, great singer as well. <laughs> but uh, back to Monaghan anyway. Um, I actually travelled over to Poland for the Ireland-Italy game. And when I travelled over, I was planning to go to Monaghan's first game back from the mid-season break the week after. They were home to maybe Dundalk. Yeah. And I got a message today of the... Italy game to say that Monaghan had actually folded and left the league. Yeah. Not only did I get that, and I didn't know about it, having been a little bit involved in the club, but not really on the inside of it. <coughs> I met their under 19s manager 20 minutes later. He was in yeah. the square in Poznan, and he didn't know about it. Mm. And he was their under 19s manager at the time, and he didn't know the club had actually folded. Yeah. That's the level of just. There's no planning goes into when something happens like this. You're just putting. Yeah loads of players and staff and everything like that out of a job and yes the club holds a lot of the blame to it because yeah. they shouldn't be going beyond their means to begin with yeah. but I think in Bray's case they thought we bring in a better squad we're playing well yeah. we're playing good football with a good manager we've got a better image now than we maybe did a few years ago mm. Bray is a big town and Bray is a sporting town people will come in the doors and they can have that idea and that's fine yeah, but I admire them for being ambitious. Yeah. For it. there's nothing wrong with like actually having the the yeah. the formula to kind of go out and do that. I mean, they, in fairness, from their playing point of view, they've lived up to the ambition that they they've been outstanding. All season, you know what I mean. Mm. Um, but the FAI at some point have to step in there. Yeah. They have it's to step in pro- and say it's a lack of professionalism on the FAI's part. Listen, we don't know the actual figures for it, but some of the rumored figures, like Gary McKay being on fifteen hundred quid a week. That's fine for Shamrock Rovers or it's Dundalk not, it's or not Cork. Even really fine for those so, clubs. Yeah, well, if he's one of their top players, maybe yeah. then you can one pay or two him that. players on that way. But when you yeah. four or five, six is starting to uh, starting to mount up, and and for Bray to be paying him that, and I know paying other players a lot of money compared to other clubs their size in the league. At some point, something has to give. Either attendances have to go up, or a sponsorship deal, or TV money yeah. has to come in to give them the money, or the flow of money is just going to stop because yeah. they're just going to run out of it. And unfortunately, the latter is what's happened. And it was so like the whole thing kind of happened so quickly. We yeah. kind of went along, went to one, went along, and then turned the corner so quickly. Surely the owners and the investors um, knew a few weeks back that maybe, look, maybe we should say to the lads. Uh, 
you know, we're 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 going to be thinking about pay cuts. They're going to be thinking about selling a few yeah, years on to balance the books. But to uh, let it get to the point where there's a week's wages left, why couldn't they have done this a month ago? Yeah. So I, I can't see how I, I don't really see a way back for them. Um, it screams! It screams to be Monaghan. I, it I, screams to be Monaghan a few. I hate years to say ago. it, but yeah, I'd agree. I think. Yeah. I I think support isn't there. I think the money's not going to be there anymore, and I think. Ultimately, they'll probably fold. They might see out the rest of the season. But um, I think if they yeah, see out the rest of the season, it'll be a depleted squad. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, it's just, it'll be a depleted squad if they do see They won't the get relegated. The they have enough points to escape that. But uh, Although I was going to say, will they get a licence next season? With the FAI, you never know. They, prob- they probably would. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you know, they're complaining about having fans and all. They're playing, probably playing the most, best football they've been playing for a number yeah. of years. Like, yeah. And they still can't get people in. So I just don't see it being a situation. Unless they get a, a bunch of average players in yeah. on an average wage. Hmm. Or just on they? Um, on amateur, yeah. even on amateur teams. Like they raid the, I don't league, think they they raid got, the local league of Ireland. They haven't the local Lancer Senior League teams. And stuff. They I don't do think they go team, totally yeah. bust. Do you know what I mean, I think yeah. they they might drop down to Division One, but I don't see them going down totally. Plus, um, they've never really connected with the locals in the area in terms of fans. <coughs> um, speaking as a local man, speaking as a local man, yeah. they uh, they've never really made much of an effort to integrate uh, children, getting them going to matches and stuff. They've signed a deal with Joey's from Sally Noggin, um, and there was issues with Ardmore Rovers. They had signed a deal with them. Yeah. We won't say too much about it. Yeah. Well, basically, that deal ended rather abruptly, and they just haven't really. They haven't really. I mean, a few years ago, I used to live in Gorey and Wexford. Um, about say, would we'll say this is about eight years ago at the time I was playing football, and Tars now Brian Kieran Tars now Brian was sent down yeah. Bray Wanderers to do a training session with us. Now that's a hundred kilometers, about seven. No, it's between. I'd say between seventy and a hundred kilometers away from Bray. Yeah. That's that's great ambition. There was Wexford Youth went around back then. I don't think yeah. that was them saying, right? Listen, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a look at anything south of out south of Bray and see if we can get fans from there. Yeah, exactly. Because there, there is nothing. Anymore, there, there is nothing no. before Waterford at no. that stage, especially. Yeah. There's nothing before. Now there's Wexford Youth, but I mean, even like Wexford Youth are in the first division. Really, for for Bray, they should be targeting fans from as far north to Dundee and as far south to the likes of Wexford and stuff. But yeah. I think Gorey, they've sorry, always. They've just. Ne- they've always. I think another thing is that there's too many clubs in that area. Yeah. If you were to, if you were to go, I'd say twenty kilometres from the Carlow grounds, you have UCD, Shamrock Rovers, St. Pat's, uh, Teely is Teely only about le- less than eight kilometres away. Yeah. So uh, another lack of foresight from the FAI thrown in Cabin Teely. They're yeah, fi- especially they're, when there was other in the clubs. middle of Bray and UCD. I don't really see the point there, but yeah, especially when there was other clubs. Obviously, Camtini are a massive amateur club. Yeah, in Dublin and in Ireland, they they're schoolboy teams. They may have the most schoilboy teams I think of I think any club biggest, in Ireland I at the minute. Is, yeah. Um, so they're a good club and they're a well-run club, and they've Doesn't shown in a couple of years yeah. in the league that they can sustain a League of Ireland team, and they are doing mm. fine because we obviously we have Josh on the couch here regularly, and he works with Camtini. Yeah. He's on the staff there. And as he says, they're kind of they're going fine so financially wise anyway yeah. from what it looks to There's be. There's an awful lot of children playing for them to yeah. fund that club. That only think it's two hundred fifty quid per child. Yeah, exactly. And, and then they've, they've, they've a thousand, have they? Have they yeah, thousand? and they've a stream of player as well where they yeah. don't exactly they don't have, have to go yeah. out and do what ninety percent of League of Ireland yeah. clubs have to do, which is every season nope. all your players are out of contract and suddenly you have to build a new squad from scratch. They can kind of maintain the squad a little bit more and maintain yeah. a philosophy and a style of football with players kind of coming through. That that being said, it will, like if Bray do manage to come through this unscathed, it would be nice to see that relationship with Joey's kind of developing bloom because yeah. Joey's have made so many so many top players that developed them over the years, and I'm, yeah. it'd be a good it's way. A very for, good club. Yeah, it'd be a good way for him to go through uh, go through the proper systems rather than just going straight to England. Yeah. Let let young lads from Joey's 17s, 19s play for Bray. Uh, play for a few years and then get sold and let the League of Ireland benefit from the transfers yeah. and let it put it back into grassroots football um, so we'll move on then to the last kind of point really to ask you on you obviously t- spoke to Harry Kenny today mm. and you said to me he was a little bit more bullish maybe than you would have thought about the situation he wasn't yeah. so kind of we've heard so much over the weekend about what's happening there and everything like that and he seemed to kind of go against a lot of what has been said in the media and on social media and yeah, everything. He said there's plenty of rumours which there is but there, yeah. that's football. Um, he was surprisingly upbeat but at the same time realistic. He said um, there's a meeting tomorrow which is Tuesday uh, between the board, the players and the management. Um, 
after that meeting will know fully what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, the club are still hopeful that another investor comes in. I can't see that happening myself. Not to the extent no. to pay this group of players till the rest of the, till um, the end of the season. He also said he doesn't expect... Because the rule is if you can pay the players, they're yours and they're still under contract. But if they can't pay them, well then... They, they can, can sign for whoever they want. Yeah. I asked him, could perhaps the club raise raise the funds to pay players for a while and then potentially sell them? He said he doesn't think so. So I think they would need a fairly substantial dig out. Yeah. Which I can't see coming. Um, if this was Shamrock Rovers or yeah. Bowes or Patsy. And again, there's no fans. Yeah, Actually, at least someone would Cork come were in. rescued by their fans, weren't they? Yeah. That's not going to happen in That's this That's the thing. Case. Yeah, you look at it and you've got Cork were rescued by their fans. Rovers were rescued by their members, but yeah. their fans. And Dundalk in a similar kind of fashion yeah. as well. And they're the three biggest clubs in Ireland, really, at the minute. Yeah, it's not going to um, So, uh, yeah, as you say, it's not going to happen with a team who are only getting maybe 600 people at games. If even. They've only, I think, broken a 1,000 attendance-wise this season twice, twice now against uh, Rovers and Bowes. Rovers and, Ro- and uh, that Dundalk that's game. That Dundalk, <laughs> that Dundalk game had uh, over 1,000 as well. Yeah. They're playing Cork next um, Friday, Friday week, it'll be, yeah. at home. So they'll probably get a big well. Sorry, if they have a team to field, they'll have a big crowd. Yeah. Up there, it's or in Bray for that one because everyone will probably probably want to show support now. But I mean, that's showing support at the very end is not really any good. When if instead of two and two and a half thousand people going to that match, why didn't five hundred go five times? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's not really any good to anyone at this stage. Exactly. Well, we're going to leave it there. Um, we might have another video out later in the week or next week to update the situation. Or IP. Yeah, or, or IP, <laughs> Bright Wanderers. We'll see. Um, we'll keep you up to date and everything like that. But we'll talk to you again soon. Cheers. And make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Cheers, sorry.